And we're live. Uh, welcome to LSC Online. My name's Lee Stafford. I'm going to be your compare for the next hour and a half. Uh, guys, we love questions today. There's no such thing as a silly question. So any questions you've got about the work that you see, anything to do with LSC, anything to do with the hair world whatsoever, just please keep them questions coming and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I know there's plenty of things you could be doing now, so we really appreciate you spending this time with us. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's kick things off. So um, the staff that is going to be presenting to you today uh, is an international educator. He's a multi-salon owner, uh, multi-award winner, um, and uh, would you believe he got his YouTube channel monetized uh, last week? Uh, uh, all round top fella, please. Uh, uh, let me introduce you to the one and only Paul Watts. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Pleasure to be here. Um, first of all, I just, before I introduce myself and get into today, we want to see the, the, the comments, the chat box just blow up. So uh, if you can get all your emojis in there for your, how you're feeling today. Are you feeling good? Like put a big smiley emoji in there, put a heart, put a thumbs up. Let's just see that chat box go crazy today. And like Lee said, just get all your questions in. We're going to be answering questions all the way through today's seminar. Uh, and we're going to try and get everyone answered for you. So get them in there. And we can't wait to, to hear what you want to find out today. So like Lee said, uh, I'm a salon owner. My name is Paul Watts. I'm from the Midlands area in England um, and I'm a, an international uh, artist for, for Joyco. So I, I get to do this on a, on a, on a very big level. So uh, what has really, really helped us in, in, this, in this time where everything sort of shut down is this. I mean, technology has, has made us able to reach you guys on a different level, bringing you incredible education and uh, we're really, really excited to show you it today. So we've been doing a few of these and the short graduation is one of the ones that really crops up a lot. And I think because the sectioning pattern is, is when you're doing it first, second, third time, it's a little bit tricky to get the hang of, but as soon as you start getting that um, down, you'll be absolutely loving it and, and flying with this recipe. So I'm gonna be showing you and breaking it down today. But what we are doing is we're adding a little bit of a twist to our recipes. We just want to bring the Lee Stafford education recipes from what you're learning right now, foundational, getting you ready to be qualified. And what we're doing is we're adding a little twist to, to give you a little bit more of an arsenal, a little bit more in your tool bag to be able to take it to your salon floor, to your clients, and just basically give them different haircuts or if they bring a picture in, we're going to show you how we can we can transition your your mind and the short grad into a bang on trend haircut in the salon. So is that exciting? If it is, let me know in the in the chat. Let's get the questions. I'm in excited, the Paul. I'm excited, mate. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to show you. So with the energy, feel the energy, guys. Let's get the comments and the emojis in the chat box because uh, we want to see how you're all feeling. There's one, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy, and uh, keep them coming. So we're going to get into it today, but I'm going to show you first the original recipe that we do. And this here is the beautiful short grad LSE recipe. And that is it, what we normally do. So with all the same sectioning pattern, we've got the really nice fringe across the face, a real, real wearable salon winner. Um, and then I did it again. I'm going to show you this one. We can see the emojis coming in now. Good morning, everybody. Everybody's waking up. So this is exactly the same recipe, but it's just got a bit of, of texture in there, a bit of a wave. How did you do that texture, Paul? So I used uh, some beach spray, Lee Stafford beach yeah. spray in there. Got a little bit of mousse as well in there. Diffused it and then got a tong uh, and used the twisted tong method, to be honest. Right. Uh, I, know, I know it's short but that's why you've got all the kinks and bumps in there. The in that. It's amazing yeah. now they look so different and they're, they're exactly the same haircut, just yeah. styled differently. Cool, right. And then we started, we started experimenting with these twists for you guys. And I'm really excited to show you. I'm really excited to show you today's as well. So today's uh, I'm hoping is gonna really open your mind into really 
understanding, how we can take what you're learning right now and then just hit the salon floor running. But this is a little twist as well. So this is the short grad. This is the same recipe, short grad, but on top, this is a short, long grad. So I took my section, middle section, we bring it out 45 degrees and we cut from short to long, but this length was to, to about the eyebrow is where I took it. It's a bit and cheeky, that one, isn't it, Paul? I mean, you, yeah. know what, you know what's screaming out at me is it's, is it all the, all the same length, um, short graduation on the underneath? of them Everything. Three so Everything. the short graduation is the same, You've, but it, they, they're all for different personalities, aren't they? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, this is this is contemporary. This is a salon winner. If somebody wants a short grad with a, with a, a, a fringe across their face, this is what you're going to be doing on your clients. When you've got that client coming in who's a little bit cool, a little bit funky, a little bit quirky, and they want something a bit different, a bit of a shattered fringe, maybe a little bit of precision in there. So this is all a short grad. I even changed the hairline up slightly. And that was inspired by Vidal Sassoon's five-point haircut. Where, where he, he manipulates the hairline, just add a little bit of difference there. Mm, like that. But this was all, all precision cut through there. I wanted to give it a real nice sharp edge and then shatter it. And then again, shatter through there, nice bit of precision work through there. And then these pieces that you see, these longer pieces, on the long grad where, where we frame the face, where it's all really nice and shaped, these are the pieces that we, that we get. We get every time. That's a little look. So that is a short grad underneath and a short long grad on top to achieve that. And then just a bit of personalization, just to just to give it a little bit of a quirky look. Mm, like that, like that. Right. The same haircut again, short graduation underneath, long grad on top, but went a little bit longer. Let's just style it out a little bit. So that there is a short grad all underneath and then the long grad on top was taken to the nose through there so we brought it out 45 degrees cut from short to long as we do with the long grad but it was just a bit longer than the other one and it gives you a real nice disconnected bob peekaboo bob um and what it does so with that length there it automatically gives me that line on a jaw and I thought that's a really nice complementary length on, on this client, on my mannequin. So using our recipe for our one length above, where we freehand in once it's blow dried, so wrap dried, one hand straightened, we get it nice and smooth. And then we just inside out method, just freehanded that in through there and just connected it to our jawline. And that is what it gives us. I added a little bit of color just to just so you could see what, what we can do with our recipes. But again. Something which is salon floor ready, mm. something that I use in the salon all the time. And then yesterday I had the pleasure of presenting to Hales Owen College and we did a twist again. So the reason we're doing a lot of short graduations, like I said, is a lot of people uh, want to see how it's done. A lot of people sort of struggle with it. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit more technical. The sectioning pattern takes a little, little bit getting used to. But as soon as you do, you're flying with it. And then we created this yesterday. So this is a short grad all underneath, but we, we did a bit of a difference on top. So we took a middle parting through there, and then this side, you can see it's shorter. So I'll start on this side, sorry. So on the longer side, we connected the top to our sliver through there. And the sliver that runs through the short graduation through here, we just connected that. And then all that hair came back, came back. So this was all brought back and cut vertically. And what that gives us, if we're over directing, what is that giving us, guys? Let's see in the comments below uh, on, on the, in the chat box, sorry. What does over direction give us? And, we, and it's plain, it's clear to see, isn't it? With that over directed right back there. It was like a layer on the crown and you brought everything back to that. Layer all, all the way back to there to our horseshoe so we have the horseshoe on top still and then this side the right the right hand side was all brought back up to the ceiling point cut and then as we let it fall it gives us that nice disconnection little bit of quirk to it and then on the left hand side 
I measured my length here. And when I came to the front, my first section, I measured again. And then I over-directed everything from the back to the front to the ceiling. And you can see we've got that disconnection at the back. Mm. Now, if you comb it in, it blends in. We could, we could soften it off a bit more. We could take it shorter. We could take it right off and have it all blended in, just depending on your client's preference of what they're looking for from Cheek. their hairdresser. Pardon? Cheeky again. Cheeky, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got a real thing for disconnection. I've got a real thing for precision. I love seeing really bold hairlines through there. That was just point cutting with the fringe and then just, just sort of softened off through there. And just gives us, yeah, gives us a real cheeky sort of look. I mean, that can just be combed out of the way. She obviously doesn't want it in her yeah. eyes. And it sits like that. A mm. lot of different looks there using the fundamental short, graduan short graduation on the underneath. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're trying to do, guys. We're, we're exploring. So when I was at college, um, I really struggled with, uh, I was saying this yesterday, colour sort of come really natural to me um, once I got my head around it. But um, cutting, I really had to work at, and I couldn't really understand angles. I couldn't understand 45, why I would bring 45, 90, why would elevate, why we wouldn't elevate. These were all questions, and I needed to find out the why, which is why we're here today, giving you variations so you can really understand, because you're going to go into a salon, you're going to be doing clients, and not everybody's going to want that. They're going to bring in a picture, and they're going to say, oh, I love this. I love this, how this is uh, longer on one side, or maybe shorter at the back. And what we're doing is we're going to be exploring all of this for you. So I'm going to show you today's model. Let's move this out of the way. So this is today's model. That looks lovely. And this is exactly the same again. This is a short grad underneath. But we just changed what we did on top slightly. So just to give you a little bit of idea where we're heading to with today's mannequin when I start cutting is underneath 100% uh, short graduation fundamentals. We had the horseshoe in there. We had the, the, the uh, temporal section. We sectioned all that out. We started with the sliver and so on. We went all the way through. But then when it came to the top, and you can see the shorter side here that just gradually gets longer. So we're creating uh, an asymmetric haircut using our short graduation technique. And we already know that we can over direct hair to maintain length. And this is all we've done today. So you can see just how beautifully it just sits on a, the fringe, just kisses a lot across there. Sorry, the, the camera's opposite <laughs> through there. And it gives us a really cool, I mean, really salon, uh, clients come into my salon asking for these haircuts. So for you to be able to really get your head around how we just create a real fundamental uh, uh, look with our recipe, and we're just putting a 10% twist on what we do to bring you bang on to salon floor trends. So what we did with this is where we put our sliver in, which is there, all I did was connect that, if you can see. So I just connected that. And then all of this hair onto the top horseshoe was just brought all over to here. And just cut in, and then when it fell, it fell longer, which gives us that shape. And this is the one you're doing today, Paul. Yeah. This is today's look, yeah. And uh, I, I said to you yesterday, Lee, when I when I did it, I think it's going to be a real, real eye opener. Real, uh, it's going to open your mind as well, because to be able to understand one of the biggest things when you're going to be going into the big wide world of hairdressing, which is super exciting, is that clients are going to come into the salon or they're going to phone you up, they're going to book an appointment and they're going to bring in a picture. And mm. they're not going to bring in a picture that just says short graduation on it. They're mm. going to bring in a picture of a, of a celebrity, a model, a picture of a news reporter, and they're going to show you it and, and be like, I love that. I want that. And you're like, oh, that's not a short grad. How, how, do, I, how do I get this length here? And then this is where you, it's like, okay, so I'll just cut it sort of short, but then how do we get the layers up here? How do we connect it all, but also disconnect it? So this is why we're doing what we're doing, and we're gonna be showing you some really exciting looks. We've got so many of these on the horizon that, uh, yeah, I'm super excited for. So I will 
get my lovely model for today. If there's any question, guys, get the questions in because while I'm just setting up, Lee's going to throw the questions at me and we're going to we're going to give you all the answers. Please keep the questions coming, guys. If you like what you're seeing, give us a like. Please subscribe, uh, guys, to this channel because uh, then you'll be notified by all the other um, shows that are coming up. So please uh, subscribe. Uh, so, Emily has said, how would you know how far to over-direct to get that length at the front, depending on the client? Cool. Personal preference is down to, if somebody brings in a picture and they you sort of see uh, the length you're going to be working at. What I did yesterday, I knew I wanted to hit a, just below the jawline. So I got this bit of hair, which was much longer. As you'll see, it's all down here. And I just pulled it back and pulled it back to there. And then, and then we, we, we cut it off. But the beauty of this recipe is that our recipe took it to this length. If somebody wants it shorter, I'm going to refine this slightly at the end to take it up a little bit. But all I did was connect this to our underneath section from our um, sliver section. And correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, if you brought it back and the fringe came down to the neck, for example, you could always then chop it off by doing like a one length above, couldn't you? Absolutely, yeah. And it's what I'm going to do after. I'm just going, to ref just going to refine that off. Just take it. Just it's a little bit, a little bit stronger. Because if you look through there, I love the texture. It's a little bit frayed. I'm just going to just take off that, so it's just a little bit stronger through there. And there's one thing as well I didn't show you. So there's the back. That's it all connected. This this hasn't really been refined, to be honest. You can still see there's that length there, and it just gets gradually shorter through there. But I get, again, I left a little quirk on that hairline. I took it nice and blunt this side through here. And then I just left a little bit of, a little, a little bit. Stardust touch. Yeah, if, if they know who that is, let us know in the, in the, in the comments. <laughs> if no not, see people. Stardust is, guys. But that is it, guys. So you can see how that is blended through, basically, by doing this recipe. I haven't really had to do anything. We've got these really nice short texture layers. If we get a little bit of product in there, we can really add some definition and movement. And then that fringe just coming across through there. Nice. So this is what we're going to show you today, guys. So let us know if you're excited. We want this, we want the comments and chat box to explode, guys. Keep the com wanna... comments coming, guys. Anything about the industry, uh, anything about your careers, um, anything that you're concerned about, anything you'd like to know, how you go about doing something. Me and Paul are here for an hour and a half with you to delay for well, an hour and 15 minutes now. So um, please, any questions that you've got, fire away. Yeah, keep them coming, guys. Right, so we're going to start with our short graduation sectioning pattern. So where we start, we start looking on the top. So central parting, make sure we're getting perfect balance. We get that in, and then we start looking at our recession points. And then from our recession, we'll get our finger, and we're going to work to just below the crown. And the reason we do that is because we want to take into consideration everybody's crown. Some people have a double crown, some people might have a crown to the right, to the left, quite high, quite low, which is why we just come below the crown. So we're making sure that this haircut is bespoke to that individual. So we'll get our finger for our point of reference and then we'll pop it just below the crown through there. And then we start off at the recession points. So I'll start on the right-hand side coming round through there. So point of reference. And then we draw our section through there. And that section's out this side of the top section. We then, again, finger for point of reference. We find this, the other side recession point. And then we go to our point of reference before. And then we just draw that section round and meet that point there. And again, let us know in the comments, do you struggle with sectioning? It's something that I struggled with massively. And it wasn't until uh, using this finger as, as a point of reference, because if you close your eyes, your fingers are still going to meet. Your, your brain automatically meets your, your body. To, it's just something that we've, we've got as, as human beings that our, our bodies really in sync. 
And when I started using this finger for my point of reference, my lines started becoming more defined, sharper. I knew where I was going. This is why we use our sectioning patterns. We use it as a GPS, as a bit of a map. So we know exactly where we're going. So then when we're working through the haircut, it's like, right, we're going to look underneath first. Then we're going to move up to here. Then we're going to move up to here. So we know exactly where we're going. And we're not going to get too confused or, or messed up. We, we just know what we're going to do all the way through our haircuts, which is why, uh, at least after education, we do say that our sectioning patterns, get them 10 out of 10, and then you'll be able to just do these haircuts an absolute breeze. Have so you that's always our... pre-sectioned, Paul? Pardon? Have you always pre-sectioned like this? Not like this. Not since LSE. I, I, I uh, like you guys, you, you guys are so lucky to have LSE at your college. So I went to a local college to me uh, and I, 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 I tell this story quite a bit about um, I learned to, to, to cut four bobs before I could cut a bob. So on one night I would go to college and then my tutor would be like, right, we're doing a bob today. Let's cut a bob. And then the next day I'd walk in, that tutor wasn't there. I had a different tutor. Uh, and she said, right, what are we doing? I said, oh, we're doing a bob. So it's okay. So you want to start around here. I'm like, well, but she said, we start here. She went, oh, well, yeah, that's how they do it. But we're going to, this is how I'm going to do it. But with our recipes at LSE, you will know that I'm going to do it exactly how you're going to do it and exactly how your trainers are going to do it. Mm. So that's the, the beauty of what we're doing. And there was, so a sectioning pattern when I first learned was just a hot cross bun as, as, as has been a, a thing in hairdressing for years a hot cross bun section, um, and then just section out and cut. So tell me this, so you didn't, so for, for the first, you've been with LSC how long now, Paul? Since 2013. Is it seven years? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, how long have you been in Harrison for now? 15, so eight so years. For eight years, you didn't really pre-section like that. Not, no, not like this, not to this not like level. This. But I, I would. Pre-sectioning like that, what has been the benefit to your career? Precision. Uh, my haircuts have gone up tenfold, I hope. Um, my, my, just everything, everything. I mean, with colour, I, I, I now pre-section all my colour work. I pre-section all of my styling work. It's just, it gives you such a clear head. And this is where anxiety comes from, guys. If you are um, of, of like a, where you're not pre-sectioning or it's not quite 100% and you're sort of thinking, oh, my God, I don't really know where I'm going to go next because I haven't really pre-sectioned it out. I'm just sort of guessing. And if you guess, you start to yeah. make mistakes. And But with these recipes, if we are sectioning, I know I'm working through here and I'm moving through here and I'm going to move through here and then I'm going to blow dry and then I'm going to refine. So there's just so much to this that has changed my game I mean, we were talking about it again yesterday, Leo. If you check out my Instagram, guys, I put all my mannequins on my Instagram. Uh, Lee will put it down below in a bit. And um, you can see just the, the level of, of things that just get better. Precision gets better. So when I'm talking about those precise hairlines, ev everything, everything. So for my first eight years, I not guessed. I knew what I wanted to achieve, but I just didn't have a, a trusted method, I suppose, is the best way to put it. I, I was I would do a bob and I'd be like, oh, that was good. And then when they come in again the next time, it's like, how, what did I do? But with this, if someone comes in and they've got a short grad, I know this is how I started. So what would you say to Emily who says, uh, I'm struggling getting my sections neat? Yeah, this, it's, a, it's a common thing, uh, something I really struggled with. And at college, I would, I would get my mannequin head at home and I would just draw sections through with a pintail comb at home and practice. That's the first thing. Practice, practice, practice. And then understanding pressure on the scalp. So using a pintail comb. So if you're not using a pintail comb, we highly recommend a pintail comb because it's nice and thin. It gives you a precise aim of where you're going to be sectioning through. And one of the beauties of it is you can pop it on the scalp and then you just get a bit of pressure and you draw that through and mm. you know you're going to get a line like a laser. And I think the thing is, Paul, the reality of it is, is that you're going to struggle with everything when you're starting, right? Nothing's really, you know, it doesn't come easy to most people. Most people, they struggle. It takes a long while 
to things to click. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Every, everything in life. I mean, if we all uh, said, right, I'm going to be a hairdresser and we just smashed it off straight away. And then we, we would say, I'm going to be a footballer. And then you were a footballer. It, it, we just, it wouldn't be. Yeah. Wait, right, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, it's not realistic, is it? It's um, everything takes time. Everything is, is um, everything that's new is, is going to take you time to, to learn, to perfect, mm. to, to just get your skill and get your flavor and your own sort of vibe, because it, it's great that we're showing you these, these um, section patterns and these haircuts but with what we're going to do today, where I'm over directing, you might not want to over direct as much, or you might want to over direct it right the way over. And that's your sort of your style that you want to sort of bring into what you do. It's like driving, guys. When you're being uh, taught to drive, you're doing it to the book. So you don't crash, you can park. And then when you start to drive by yourself, you can then get your own way of doing it. And, and I think that's the beauty of, of what we do. We, we give you this. And but now what we're giving you is the twists. So we're giving you even more and, and showing you the way in which we can really customize and, and bring in your own sort of flavor. Yeah. And I think Jenny and saying that, you know, it's difficult to do on doll's heads. Um, you know, I think that, you know, it, it can be difficult, definitely. And not as much fun doing it on doll's heads. But the real beauty of using a doll's head is that, like Paul said, you can practice and practice any time of the day. Anytime, you know, over the weekend. I mean, you know, they're there to practice on, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, if you look at, in front of me now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen heads in front of me, and I've got forty behind me. And mm. that is um, this is for all my my design work that I do, my work with Lee Stafford, my work with Joyco. I'm always, always practicing. And I've been doing it now 15 years and I still come into this area and I still, I was here on Saturday just practicing and having a little bit of a vibe with, with a, with a mannequin and just trying out some new things to bring to you guys. So if when you get to your, your qualification, don't stop there, just, just continue and, and continue to just get better and better and better. Um, I'm just going to jump onto this next section. I'm going to get into cutting and then we can just fire through all the questions so we've popped this in here. So our horseshoe from our recession to our point of reference just below the crown to our recession, bumped it out nice and neatly. We've then got this sectioned out and then we start on here. So we look for the temporal, which are these softer pieces of, of our head on the side. And again, we, we're using our pintail there. And how we find the, the point at the back that we, we get to is is really great as well. And I, I really like the way that we, we make these haircuts really bespoke to the individual because we're using recession points. Everybody's might be a little bit different, higher, lower. And, and we pick that point because it's, it's bespoke to that individual. So looking at their face shape and then when it comes to their occipital bow and their crown, they might be slightly different on everybody. So we've gone just below our crown here and we find our occipital bone there. We pop a finger on our bottom of our horseshoe and then we find that middle point just there and that is our point of reference so then we come from our uh, temporal draw it round to there and then this is bumped out nice and neatly and then we come from our point of reference at the back and draw it round to our temporal area which then sections that out and sections all underneath. But a great tip that I picked up with LSE, and I'll grab my comb for it, is when we're trying to get balance and we, we're thinking, oh, that's slightly off and, and that's over that side. And, and is that equal? We've got a great tool here. So once we've sectioned this through here, we can grab our comb, pop it on our section on our recession, get our thumb on our hairline and then come through, pop it there. And then that is, we know now that we've got complete symmetry through those two sides. How do we know? Because we know if we pop that on our recession, we want that to be that and half again. So there. And that is how we, we, we build our perfect symmetry haircuts in, in LSE. So if you guys are doing that, then continue because your haircut's just going to get better and better. Your sectionings are going to get better and better. Your balance, symmetry, and everything is just going to go up tenfold. So if that's helped, guys, let us know in the comments. 
Uh, if you want to know anything else, you can throw at us, but I'm going to start cutting so you, all you guys can see what we're going to get up to. Right. I want you to be able to see this. So the beauty of these haircuts that we do are the sliver sections. Now, this is something that Lee was saying. Did I section like this before? I was with LSE. No, I didn't. He would ask me a question. Did I put these sliver sections in before I was with LSE? No, I didn't. So this is why you guys are so lucky because you've got a guy that you are putting in here to begin with all the way around the haircut. And what I was saying was when I've got a hot cross bun, I've got that sectioned out. I then started to graduate my haircuts in. And then when I get to the side, it's sort of a little bit of a guessing game because I didn't really know where I was going. But with these slivers that we put all the way around the head, we know we're going to be consistent with our, with our length and with our graduation because that's our guide all the way through. So let's start with this. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to be pulling out to a th just under a third of the comb. So sticking to the LSE recipe completely, we're going to pull the hair out and we're going to find a third of the comb and I'm going to cut my line in and I'm going to follow it all the way to the front and then all the way to the front. So I'm going to get on with that. And then if we've got any questions, Lee's going to fire them at me. So your team that you have in the salon, Paul, yep. they approach a short haircut like this as well. A short so, haircut. so, yeah. So the way that uh, my team now, and like I was saying about the flavours that we get, we get our own sort of style. But these haircuts work every time, every single time. So if they are using um, elements of it, even, because we're not going to be doing a short grad every time. We're not going to be doing a disconnected haircut every time. We're not going to be doing a long grad every time. We're doing um, mashups of them all. Then, yes, they'll be using pieces of these recipes to make sure that they're creating these haircuts. Is this what you teach your trainees? LSE, yeah. Yeah. LSE is what I use with my team in the salon, and it's on our uh, reception computer. So if, if they've got a spare minute, if our assistant or apprentice, a stylist has a spare minute, they can go over and watch it. It's on their mobile phones, so they can watch it. But, yeah, this this is these recipes completely changed the way that I cut hair for the, for the, for the better. We've got a message, a uh, question from e Emily. I used to yeah. work in a salon where stylists were self-employed. Do you think it's best for me to go to that salon or go to another salon where I am an employee rather than paying for a chair? We were talking about this earlier, weren't we? Big, big, big debate, yeah. Big debate, this in the hair, hair industry. All I can, I would say 100% go employed. 100% go employed. Reason for it is you're going to get education. Let me step back a little bit education, you're going to get looked after, you're going to get holiday pay, sick pay, you're going to be a, a, a real part of that team. If you're just renting a chair and there's someone else renting a chair, you're all going to be fighting over the clients that come into the salon. And there's a there's a big thing at the minute, I don't want to get too political into it, but there's a big thing at the minute with um, where Uber, we all know Uber and why, and black cabs in London really, really didn't like uh, Uber. And it's because they were all self-employed, just picking up people whenever and the black cabs were missing out but the the crown court have, have just um announced that, that 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 now uber drivers should have been employed so there's a real shift to a good working practice and why did they say they should be employed paul because they're working in one location renting basically they've got a they're renting a car they're renting a space like you would rent a chair and the the, the court have said hang on a minute you're working five, six, seven days a week for Uber. You should be employed. Like that's your employer. That's what employees do. They, if it was an Uber driver, they should have been able to go and work for Uber and then go and be a black cab and then go and be a, another taxi company. But it, it, it didn't work out that way. Uber had all these people working for them as self-employed. So the whole tax thing is, is a big thing. Uh, they didn't get really looked after, with, which is what they found out in court. Um, so. They needed employee benefits, which is sick pay, holiday pay, looking mm. after basically, being educated. Because mm. all they did was jump in their car, go and pick somebody up, and, and so on. I mean, I love Uber, love Uber. 
it's, it's revolutionized, revolutionized with an app, the way that we're working in today's society. Mm. But I believe that they, they need to be employed, looked after. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's it with, with regards to renting spaces, renting chairs. There's a lot going to be changing in, in, in next coming years with regards to renting a chair. But I would 100% say that you need to, you, you should want to, 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 pro, um, to progress, be employed by a, by a mm. salon, a salon owner who recognizes your talent and wants to invest in you rather than you just pay them to be in their, in their building. Yeah, I think it's done something really strongly there, Paul, about the education because, you know, at this point in your career, guys, the most important thing is education. It really is. Um, and, you know, you want to be in the best salon that is giving you the best education, you know, to do with hair, the way they're running their business, the way they deal with their clients, the service. You know, you want to be somewhere where you're getting educated at this point in your careers because that is just going to pay you back dividends for the rest of your life. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I just... I think the whole thing where, don't get me wrong, the whole freelance renting a chair thing, it does have a purpose in our industry. And the purpose is that when you've got, say somebody like me, where I work abroad um, pretty much every weekend that I, when we can, um, I, I do this with Lee, so I'd, I'd maybe do this on a day. And then if I had two days where I really wanted to look after clients, I could then go and rent a space in a salon for two days only and that would just be, look, I, I do my thing. I just need to look after a couple of clients a, a week. I think that's where renting chairs, freelancing really has a place. But I just don't think that if you're at a level where you, you want to be in part of a team, you want to be educated, you want to progress. I think being as part of a tight knit team employed is the way forward. I hope that, I hope that helped. It does. And also, um, Paul, I want to talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, you know, we, we, we did the seminar yesterday, didn't we? And a lot of people, a lot of students were talking about, you know, getting sort of unmotivated yeah. and, and depressed through this lockdown, you know. But what has really amazed me with you is that, you know, you could be sitting at home now. Yeah. Netflix. Um, be, yeah. But you've been in your salon all the time on your own, yeah. uh, haircuts, uh, videoing it, getting your YouTube set set up, and it just seems to me that you've turned a, a real lemon into you know a gin and tonic. Talk us through a little bit about what you've been doing in lockdown. Cool, yeah, happy to. I've just put this in, guys, all the way around, just so you can see. Pull that out, pull that out. Just make sure we've got our balance through there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work. So that's our guide, work it all the way around the head. You can nice. see through there. Nice. I'm doing, I can already see where the central guide that I'm going to work through because my section up in the top through, just through there. So I draw my section down. And also what helps a lot with these mannequin heads is that pivot point put a nice line there as well. Um, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to put my graduation in so you'll see my fingers are on a diagonal, the hair's coming out 90 degrees, and I'm going to be cutting in a graduated line. So I'm going to start with that, but I'll answer that question now, Lee. So, yeah, I mean, really turning uh, this lockdown uh, into a positive. Um, I, I, I've got a real thing for educating people. I've got a real love for it, and I, I it's really hard to sort of, within within these times is to have a purpose and that was my biggest thing I, I was really struggling to have a a purpose I wanted to still do hair I wanted to um give back I wanted to give people education um and I just thought right I made so this is a studio in the bottom of one of my salons and I, I did it last January and um I just thought, right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start doing videos. I, I the, the where I got my motivation from was I was getting so many questions on Instagram of people asking, how did I do that haircut? How to do that color? 
and I just wanted to document it really. And then it started becoming a bit of a. How did you feel, Paul, before you sort of went live or put your first video out there? Was you apprehensive? Oh, massively, massively. I mean, I've got a video going live tomorrow on my YouTube channel that talks about the time, the first time you film, which is don't buy all this, this equipment. I started with my mobile phone and started filming. And to be honest, it was abroad. So I it, it relaxed me a little bit because I was nobody knew me. But I was in my car driving to the airport to my first uh, international job. And um, I filmed my journey sort of saying what I'm going to do. Am I apprehensive? Am I nervous? And then I got to the airport, filmed a little bit. And yeah, I mean, the first, you, you sort of like your phone's down here and it's like, no, I need to get a little bit. And then being in front of the camera at first was very weird. We, we're so used, I mean, like now I, I feel so relaxed talking to a, a little lens on my laptop. But at the beginning, you're talking to this, this thing, trying to get emotion from it and you can't. And the, the thing that blew my mind was to understand that that lens is millions of people, not in a sort of a scary sort of factor, but in a way that people actually want to listen to you. And it got easier and easier and easier. And now I can just literally, I could sit here all day by myself talking to a lens because I find it so therapeutic. What were the challenges for you, Paul, at the beginning? What, what, what things did you find really difficult when you started doing all this online stuff? Uh, talking to a lens, talking to uh, a, a camera, not getting any emotion. Uh, at, at the beginning, I I'd be talking to a, a expecting a reply whereas i'm very lucky to have you here lee asking me questions but when i do my instagram lives for for a joyco it's me in this room by myself talking to a camera having to feel silence all the time and that's a real that's a real thing that's a real struggle to be able to have uh be, to be doing something but also be offering conversation so that was that was probably my biggest my biggest challenge was was overcoming overcoming that talking to a lens i suppose at the beginning and then other factors creep in where it's it's like does anybody really want to listen to you that that's a th that's a big thing i think that's a very big, a very big thing like what what do i have to offer but the thing that again changed my mind with that is if you film it, you don't really have to put it out. You could edit it. You could make it all look really fancy. And if you don't want to upload it, don't upload it. Just get really comfortable in front of the camera and start to really um, understand your purpose with it all. And correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, if no one watches it, then you've got nothing to worry about, nothing to be embarrassed about because no one's watched it. No. Uh, and the people that haven't watched it don't know that you've done it. That's it. And the people that are the people that are watching it are, are, are probably loving it because they, they've they've been looking for this video that you've put out there for so long, and you've finally done it. And this is another big thing that blew my mind is when you there's there's when you get really into it that you can look for keywords and you can look for videos that people are looking for but aren't really on YouTube. And this is when you get a bit heavier into all the analytics and keywords, but. There's so much out there that people want to know. People want to know how to put in graduation. They want to know how to cut a blunt line. They want to know how to cut a fringe. So there's so much um, scope and possibilities out. It's endless, to be honest. And I suppose it's a bit like, you know, you might put a video out there and you might only get a few views. But in a few years' time, that same video, because you've built your reputation online, could have all of them all of a sudden had millions of views, right? Yeah, and this is where I'm at at the minute. I mean, my watch hours I I achieved from from basically one video. There was a lot of lot of build up to it, and there's a lot of views just coming here and there. But one of my videos, I did a, a trend report on the biggest trends, biggest haircut trends for 2021, and um, that's just hit fifty thousand views today. Um, and that was a, I mean, that's massive for for a little channel like mine. Um, but I did that five months ago, that video. And what so, was it? Pardon? What, what, what was it? A trend report. So it was just me basically in front of camera saying um, the biggest haircut trends for 2021 are going to be this, this and this. What were they? So there's like the French bob, there's the shag, there's the mullet, there's... Um, the mullet's going to come back. 
because I mean I'm seeing it everywhere. But do you actually think it's going to come back onto the street? I don't think Pat Sharp's going to be walking around the street everywhere. But um, I definitely think there's going to be variations of it. Um, and there'll be, like we're doing today, there'll be twists to it. So people might love all that real shaggy texture through here, but don't really want to shag at the front. They want to keep it all one length, but look, like, love the texture. So definitely there's going to be uh, elements to the shag coming out. But uh, I don't think many people are going to be walking around with a full-on shag. There's definitely going to be some people. Definitely. You mean the, 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 the 70s shag haircut, where it's like a big, heavy fringe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Long no. Party at the back. And what does what that sharp say? He says it's all, uh, all business at the front. And yeah. Party at the back. That is it, yeah. <laughs> his, his has gone now, though, hasn't it? He hasn't. Oh, he's, yeah. got it. he's got a short back and sides now. Yeah. So we're going to come back to the questions in a second. Um, I'm just working this through here. So no over direction at all. We're pulling 90 degrees out from the head. I'm angling my fingers to create the graduation and I'm using this sliver as my guide, working on a diagonal. So we put in a vertical first section guide section in here and then we change to slightly diagonal. And that was a real uh, groundbreaking part of, of this recipe because, uh, did you want to explain Lee or? What was that, sorry? About why we changed our our, our sections from vertical. Yeah, I mean, all, the, all the LS recipes, guys, uh, have been um, created by some of the best hairdressers in the world and, and by a lot of the college trainers in the colleges that we partner with. Because when we first brought these out, they weren't as they are now. They've been developed over time to make them... Um, they were always Michelin star, but they've been developed to make them easy. And one, when we first did this short grad, we did the sections vertical all the way through the back, which was fine if you're right-handed on the left-hand side. If you've got a vertical section and you're mirroring your hand the same, it's quite easy to cut there. But when you go onto the other side, it was very, very awkward to get the mirror of your body position or your finger angle should i say so um um so what we did we end up doing the first section down the middle vertical but then all the other sections were then diagonal which meant on both sides it was it was comfortable um to work that underneath graduation in so that's the side that lee's just talking about what i've just worked in this left hand side because i'm right-handed I find it really easy and comfortable to be pulling that hair into my body. But if I work on this side and I'm still pulling into my body, you would probably get a little bit of over direction because you're just because you're trying to pull it towards your body. You'd bring out your section and you'd get a slight bit of over direction. And we're not mimicking what we did on this side. So the way that we do it is uh, Mike. Mike told me uh, this, what, what he calls it. Uh, where we're working on the left-hand side that way, so hitchhiking that way. And if we're going to the right, we're going that way. So we're here, pulling towards, and then we just flip that up, and then we work that way. So whatever side we're working on, we have our thumb pointing that way, which I think is really cool, a real, real visual, um, visual part to it. But yeah, any questions that uh, we can? A question here from uh, Amelia. Amelia, is that right, Amelia? Amelia. Going, in. Amelia. My le dyslexic's going into overdrive. Um, Paul, how did you become part of the LSC team? Well, um, it all started in 2012 when I tweeted Lee. Well, it all started in 2009, to be honest. I um I got nominated for a couple of awards uh, and Lee was there handing out the awards and presenting it. And uh, Lee was my, well, start from the beginning, Lee was my hair hero and still is. So he, he got, he made me pick up a pair of scissors. He had a TV show, product line. Uh, I was a bit of a, of a Jack the Lad. I didn't know where I fitted into the industry and I, I aspired to be Lee. Uh, that was it. 
So when it hit 2009 and I got nominated for Colour Genius and Style Innovator, um, and I won it and Lee presented the awards. And then in 2012, I was up for Colourist of the Year. And again, Lee was there presenting the awards. So I met him again. And then in 2012, I tweeted him after the awards and uh, asked him if he'd come into my salon to train my team, which he did. And then on the way home, he texted me and just said, uh, enjoyed the day. Thank you. I'd love you to, to be part of my um, education platform uh, for his academies. And I mean, it blew my mind, to be honest. So that's how we, we got in contact. And then it, it was six months that I, that I didn't hear anything. And I was on holiday in Turkey and I got, a, I got an email from him. And uh, he said, would I come down to Chelmsford to, to, to meet the team and, and work on a recipe? And this was the graduated Bob, I think it was back then. Um, and the rest is, is history. I mean, it was down to putting myself out there into competitions. And we've got a great thing to talk to you in a minute about competitions. Because we wouldn't um, have met unless you'd had a competition, right? Pardon? We, wouldn't have, we, pro we, we might not have met if you hadn't have done a competition. Probably not, mate. Mm. Probably not. Uh, Jenny's got a question here, Jenny Ann. She says, so when you pull the hair straight from the head, do you tilt your fingers on an angle? Yep. So there's the 90 degrees out from the head. And you can see my fingers are just on an angle, creating that graduation. So through there using my guides you can see my guide there and you can see my guide there from previous and then we're just creating that graduation into the nape and then we're working on those little diagonal sections through here just for ease of comfort Pull that hair out. So we're pulling straight from the head. We've got our sliver above through there. Just cutting up to our guide there. And again, our last one, because as well with the short grad, we leave these pieces here, don't we, guys? And the reason we leave those is because we then jump into this part of the section, bring it all down, and then we just cut them in because it makes it so simple. So again, you can see my guide from previous, my guide from slither on an angle, 90 degrees out from the head, and then just cutting that line in like so. How often would you say you do a short grad or a variation of a short grad um, in a week's work of the salon? Oh. Is it something you would do once a day, a variation, or once a week? How often do you use it? I was thinking more twice a day, to be honest. Really? So you're using yeah. it? Online? Yeah. Is, is, what is the most used recipe in the in the salon in salon life? Well, my my favourite to use is the long grad. I, I love the symmetry, the balance that we get, how quick it is. Um, but short grad, short grad, graduated Bob, graduated Bobs are still massive. Um, variations of the short grad. So I'll be using different parts of this recipe like I'm doing today to create something a little bit different. But long grad, short grad, graduated Bob. But then you've got the twists in there that I do add uniform layer to it to, to create yeah. flatness or to create a little bit more texture. So it's, it's endless, to be honest. And what we're trying to get to you guys today is just to make you understand that we'll be going we'll be going back into the salon and I'll be using the short grad, but I'll be twisting it up probably on every single client because I want to give them something that's a bit personalized. They're not going to come in with a picture just wanting a short grad. They're going to want short grad with a longer fringe, maybe a micro fringe, shorter fringe, um, more texture on top, maybe something like that bob that's like a peekaboo bob where 
disconnected yeah. all underneath and they've just got that simplicity of straightening that top section and going mm. so there's, there's just so much to it right how, how do you feel about boris's announcement last night paul well to be honest i, I got asked this quite a bit yesterday um i am business wise i want to be open i do want to be open i want to get back in there with my team and be working with them all but like we were talking about a second ago this is really heightened my ability to be able to do digital and it's something i definitely want to take further so i i i will miss being able to be down here every day cutting hair but i'm going to be in the salon every day cutting hair again so i can't wait for that but it i'm just happy that he hasn't rushed us back and that he's understanding that we do need time um to get over this so we can have a summer again i think i think that's the main thing mm. So when is it? Is it the uh, when are salons going back? The twelfth of April. The twelfth of April. That's still like yeah. six, seven weeks away, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, like now, guys, now that you're in this room with us, I would one hundred percent get a mannequin head and start from one length below, uh, long grad, uniform layer, bobs, graduated bobs. Really, really, you've got this time now to you've got six mm. or seven weeks to to work on this. And this is what I'm excited about. When he, I was hoping he didn't say tomorrow because I'm like, right, I'm, I've still got so much I want to do down here and film. Whereas there's just, there's so much technology has taken our industry to another level. And uh, it's really, really exciting. I mean, if, 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 if students could just get a long mannequin head, I mean, they could use that long mannequin head to, uh, to really get the dressing recipes down, couldn't they? Definitely. I mean, Instagram is all very visual. And uh, if you are doing real dressing recipes, techniques, um, people are going to be clicking that like and they're going to be wanting to know who did it. Yeah. And this is your time, guys, to get ahead of the game. Because, yeah. you know, other people could be sitting there watching telly, laying in bed. If you're practicing, when we get back out there, you know, um, like I say, you're going to be, you're going to be like my in light years ahead definitely if, if you're embracing this now and really trying to um work on your digital presence and, and create a, a more exposure for yourself a profile so clients can find you digitally they're, they're like you're gonna be light years ahead like lee said i'm just gonna touch on what i'm doing i'm working up in this section now so i've just gone round and i'm working to my slither and i'm pulling out but pulling slightly down so the hair underneath is coming out and this hair on top is coming down to meet it. So I think I'm not going to show you better here. So we pull this out here. So we've got the length and then we find our guide underneath, which is there. If you can see, we then pull the hair down to there. So what you should be able to see. This is where you really still start building up graduation there, right, Paul? Yeah, this is where you start to build that that roundness, that fullness. So you can see mm. my section there is coming straight out, and then this is coming down to meet it. Mm. And the reason we do that is because we're building up weight. And this is a real technique that you can use on multiple haircuts, not just the short grad. If you want to build up weight in haircuts, this is the way to do it. This is adding graduation in a, in a different way of going that way. We're now building graduation going that way. And then all we'll do is I'll jump straight back up into the sections above. So we do it in three. So the sections are nice and well, they're thin enough so you can see the guide underneath. So I'm taking this through here, bringing it down, cutting in. I'm going to section off through here and through here. And I'll just work up to the top. And when we get to the top, that is the only part of this haircut, which is going to be different to what you already know as the short grad. So again, drop that down there. And you can still see I'm using pintail comb because I find it so much easier to section with. So I've done that through there, just get a nice clean section. Again, clipping that hair neatly out of the way. Put my pintail so, down. Paul, tell me this, what's the compromise? Because 
By doing the pre-sectioning like this and going through the haircut as methodically and as cleanly as you are now, no doubt gives you the better result, right? 100% quicker. But, quicker how, as well. but can you do this in the time that you've got on the salon floor? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, showing and, uh, yeah, trying to answer all your questions all at once. And I know we'd be in conversation with clients while we're doing it, but it doesn't really slow you down. But yeah, I mean, if I wasn't taking time out to, to, to make sure I can see you on camera and to show you, I'd be doing this in 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Mm. Sectioning pattern would be in, in five to seven minutes. Mm. And then the haircut would be, what, 33 minutes after that. Uh, I'd make sure. Now let me just clarify. Are you saying categorically, that even though it takes you a little time to pre-section it at the beginning, it will save you more time in the long run and you'll get a better result. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if we look at pre-sectioning, like I was talking at the, at the beginning, we're putting in a roadmap. We're putting in some GPS so we understand exactly where we're going. I haven't even got to think of where I'm going. I'm, all I'm doing right now is unclipping hair and watching it fall down. That's just fallen down into my section, and I know I'm cutting that now, and I know once I've cut this section here, I'm going to move on to that top piece. I haven't even got to think. It's done, isn't it? Done. I've got a question here from Sally Lund. Yeah. Would you say taking part in competition work would enhance your skills and employment opportunities? Definitely. I mean, talking the first one, skills. So... For a competition, you are going to be putting in your Michelin star 10 out of 10 work. You're going to be wanting to show what you're capable of to everybody. And then for your employment uh, opportunities, if uh, a potential employer seen your work at one of these events, these competitions online, on Instagram, YouTube video, TikTok, and they were like, I want them. I want them in my team. That's, that's what I'd be thinking of. I'd be thinking, right, I'm going to do my best ever haircut and colour, style it out beautifully, get that shine on there, get it how I want it, and then just show it, showcase it to everybody. And then you've got not just potential employers, but potential clients that are, that are screaming mm. out for a hairdresser that they, they want to um, they want to see. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Competition work, it, um, it increases your skill set, gets you excited, and um, and it creates opportunities, doesn't it? Definitely. So I've just put that in, guys, that top piece, and then all I'm going to do now is connect this underneath with our previous section, still working on a diagonal line, working that through there. It's a nice little touch working that underneath after, isn't it? It's lovely, yeah, because we touched on it yesterday, Lee. If you want to leave it, or I'll do it now, if, if you want to sort of get your scissors in there and, and using the butt and just creating that little bit of texture in there, a little bit of freedom, I'll show you on this side because there's a bit more hair. Mm. Add a point of difference to, to the haircut. If somebody wants something a little bit different, just get your scissors in there and just back comb that out. That just creates that little bit of texture in there photographic work at the end of the day this is what we this is what we do when we're when we're doing photographic uh shoots and you can make that as um as subtle or as dramatic as you want all depending by how much disconnection you leave right yeah because that's really disconnected if we want to bring it to the hairline bring that there You've got connection through here. You've got that weight point in there, which will then that could sit over. That could add a bit of volume to the hair, but that's that's how that would look. But there's there's so much just to just to do with these because we already have the pre-section in there. I know a lot of the time when I do haircuts in salon and I'm doing a haircut and then halfway through I might think that looks that looks amazing. What I'm just going to do here? I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to blunt cut that line 
in there. And I'm going to leave that as is because when I'm looking at it forming shape and I look at my client's jawline and cheeks, I think she would look better with that there. Mm. Gives you endless possibilities, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So again, we've got our guide there, guide there, and then we're just cutting that in on a diagonal section. But we're still pulling out 90 degrees from the head through there to our guideline. And then we're going to move up onto the top section, which is going to be our over direction. But you can see my guide there, guys. And then I'll just cut that in through there. And that's given us our short grad underneath. That is that all done. Let's get onto this top section now. So what we're going to do with this is we're just going to comb it all forward to make sure we've got all of our knots out, tangles, and we're going to be using this as our guide. So what we've just put in, that slither, we're going to bring it up to the ceiling. So just so you can see, how will I be able to show you so you can see that better? Our guide there, we're going to draw a line across here, and that's going to be our first section that we're going to over direct to. So just keep it nice and neat out of the way. We're going to pull in our new section we just dropped, but we're also going to pick up our sliver from underneath. We're going to pull up to the ceiling. Through there. Now, I don't know if you can see, you can see, I've got a guide just here which is this underneath section here. We pull it straight up to the ceiling, straight up, and I'm just going to point cut that across. And this is going to give us our blend on the left-hand side. And then as we over-direct it all towards us, we're going to be creating more and more disconnection. So there you go, blended already. Next section through here. We pull up to the ceiling, you see my guide there on the corner. Can you see? Let's try. This Jenny one. says, uh, I always get the uniform layer and short grad mixed up because they seem alike. What is the big difference, Paul? Say that again, sorry. Um, I always get, Jenny Ann always gets the uniform layer of short grad mixed oh, okay. up because they seem alike. What do you, what is the main difference? So difference is, is, is angle. The, the short grad we're creating uh, graduation of, of length. We are creating buildup of weight. And when you look at how we section and we're pulling out the hair, yes, we're pulling straight out from the head at 90 degrees in this, but we're putting slight graduation on it with our fingers. With the uh, uniform layer, is that correct? Uniform layer, we are just bringing it out and cutting. We want to create the, the head shape. So we're pulling it straight out and we're cutting 90 degrees and we want to create that, that, that head hugging haircut. So um, with the uniform layer, everything on the head, if you measured it with a ruler, is going to be the same length. Whereas yeah. short grade like that, you're going to have, you know, down the back, for example, you're going to have a short piece, and by the front, you're going to have a long piece, right? So it's yeah. different ends. Would you, would, you, would you agree with that, Paul? Yeah, because especially one of the biggest, uh, I think, um, eye-opening parts of a, of a uniform layer is where we have this dip behind below the occipital bone and where we sort of pull it out. Because a lot of people, when they start off with, with a uniform layer, which is absolutely fine, you, then you start to refine it, is when we work on this underneath, we start bringing it out, and then people would probably just bring that out, not, and they wouldn't follow the head shape. So you wouldn't be following that there. So we get the nice shortness in here. You'd probably bring it out there and you'd be getting this, this length. Let me know in the comments if you've found that. If you're not following the head shape enough, you, you get these sort of longer pieces at the bottom. So all I'm doing, guys, is over-directing this all the way over to our 
stationary guide, which is our sliver section. So would you say that's a layer that you're doing there, Paul? It looks like a layer, but the first one looked like a layer, but now you're pulling all the hair over to meet it. It's now turning into sort of what, a layered graduation, would you say? Yeah, it is a layer because we're, we're working above 90 degrees. So when we look at graduation, guys, and layering, anything above 90 degrees is a layer, and anything below is, is seen as graduation. Um, but this is creating a, a graduated layer, if, if you look at it that way, because we are, we're bringing it over and we're, st we're starting to get that graduation. If we were starting shorter here and then working out to longer, this is basically what we're doing on this top section through the top. Is that, is that clear? Clear to me. Is it clear yeah. to you guys? You'll see it as I work across the head, working straight to the ceiling. You will see when I start to bring all of this over, you'll start to see more hair traveling. And you know where if your tutors say, oh, you've got a bit of root drag there. If you've got root drag, you're going to um, have a bit more length because you're, you're dragging it. And this is what we're trying to do with this. We want to create length in the hair by over direction. So we're just dragging this to our pre well to our stationary guide through there straight to the ceiling and then we're just point cutting this off to create the softness straight up to the ceiling find the guide So we're still working on that recession point there because that is where we, we wanted to get our guide from through there because that's where our section, our sliver section ended. So there to there. Can we see that from the front as well, Paul? Yeah, of course. Turn that around. So that's it. So we're dragging that across. We've got our uh, horseshoe section where it would have started there. So we're bringing that up straight to the ceiling. That hair there is traveling over, and then we're cutting that in. And then you can already start to see mm. that's following through there. Nice. So this is how. So the reason I was talking at the beginning about this being really eye-opening is because a lot of people do struggle with asymmetric haircuts because they don't know. They look at hair, asymmetric haircuts and they think, oh, that's easy. Just It's, it's sort of wonky. But there has to be connection. There has to be connection somewhere. There has to be some style somewhere. And then this is how we can use our short graduation to achieve connection in an asymmetric haircut, which is what people still come in the salon for. People are still coming in for these haircuts, guys, uh, with, with disconnection and asymmetric, asymmetry, wanting something a little bit quirky to go with it's their personal. That's it, now, isn't it, Paul? Pardon? It's become a classic, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I mean, I remember when the pop, so Victoria Beckham, Posh Spice, she had the pop haircut, and I remember that being really innovative. I remember when that came in, that's when I first started hairdressing, really, and I was like, oh, my God, it blew my mind. I didn't really know how to do it. So I just had to to, to make my way through these, these wonky graduated bobs that I was doing to create the pop. But this, if I'd have known this technique back then, that all I've got to do to maintain that length there is to over direct it to the other side of the head, I'd have been I'd have been well away. But you can see, guys, like I'm literally stretching that hair all the way over to the recession point. There's the recession point that we first sectioned off straight up to the ceiling, and that's just cut over there. Last section, pull all the way over. If you can, you all still see. Okay, is that is that a good uh, view, Lee? Or yeah, brilliant view that is. It yeah. actually looks lovely dressed over that side as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's it's just because there's connection. It it just gives it. There's connection and, and disconnection all in one. So yeah, if you were to wear it there. You've got connection all through yeah. there.
and then the last section again pull into our horseshoe section which was at the recession point there pulling that right over up to the ceiling and then just taking off that length. And that is it. See, that is where on my one I'm going to show you in a second, it's coming to just below the jaw. You've got all of that shape all coming around there. So it's asymmetric, but still blends. So you've still got all that blend there. If you just brush that anywhere, there's going to be blend. And then on the top, how we create that, that texture, those short layers in there. That is it, guys. Any questions, get them into us now because we've got just under 15 minutes. So we've got a good time just to, to have a little chat about it. I'm going to get the original. Guys, you can always leave um, questions in the comments because after this live event, you can't see um, the live questions that were asked. But um, if there's any questions that you want to ask once this is finished, you can leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you. Of course we will. And on Instagram, if you want to ask us any questions, feel free to just to DM us. Um, there was a few from yesterday that were messaging me, asking me some questions about the day. So. Uh, if you're a little bit shy to put them in the live chat, put them in the comments after this video or even uh, just message us. In so the he, crown area, did you, did, you, did you pull the hair up to the ceiling? What did you do with the crown, Paul? Yeah, so it was all just brought over. So my crown is sitting there. So that will have been over-directed to here, but everything was brought up to the ceiling, as you can see from that line. There, everything was brought up to there from the horseshoe. So let me just get rid of my scissors. So if we were to start with our first section there, that would have been brought up to the ceiling there and connected to there. And there's the crown area. So that would have been over-directed and then still brought up to the ceiling. And then we go further past the crown, that's brought over, and still brought up to the ceiling. Is that okay, is that clear enough for you? And any, any other questions like that guys, just get them into us. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of refining. So we look at this, and there was a question about uh, what about if somebody didn't want this length, they want it longer or shorter. So you can see that front piece is, is longer than, than the hairline. So let's, let's look at that hairline now. So where is that hairline? Up a little bit. So I'm just gonna soften off that hairline through here, just using the points of my scissors. To create that first, I went in blunt. So put in a blunt line so you can see. And I left just that little bit there for a little quirk, a little bit of a little bit of fun. But why if they not? didn't, yeah, why not? I mean, that it. it's not for everybody, but um, you know, there's some. You know, if you get a girl that's a bit younger, you know, she's a bit, you know, unique, wants to sound a little bit different, then this is where all this stuff comes into play, right? Yeah. And we were talking about the mullet. Is it coming back? Is it not? Is 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 this an aspect of it? We've got it shorter. Mm -hmm shorter definitely through there and yeah. then we've got that little bit of length through there i could have left all of that longer so and then really opened that up so i could have got my scissors and just really chipped right into there and you could have made it much more subtle if you wanted or you like you say you could have left a bit disconnected and it had a bit more of a mullety feel right yeah but i just wanted to show you best of both worlds really there it is there a nice blunt bob and then there it is there with a little bit of quirkiness to it, just blending. And then we've just got that in there that we can just refine.
just go up into that hairline to soften out slightly and just pointing through. So when I'm pointing, I'm going in vertical. If I was going in slightly angled, I would take off length. So I've just mm -hmm. took a chunk there. And what if I took a chunk off when I was working on a, on a, on a client? If I, if, I, if I was sort of doing that and then I got a little bit, um, what's the word? <laughs> yeah, a bit carried away and I just put a big chunk in there. All you got to do is then go back in with your scissors and then you can just soften that right off. What advice would you give to someone? Emily's just asked, what advice would you give to someone who struggles with the social aspect of hairdressing? Just keep on trying. Just, just, just bring up one of the biggest things that I always used to do, and this is a top tip as well, um, is every morning, I still do this now, so I still watch a YouTube video about hair once a day. That's my religion, if we say. I make sure I watch, I, I, I absorb one piece of education every day, and that's the honest truth. Uh, but when I was learning hairdressing and I was I was just completely concentrating on cutting hair and I still thought I still knew I had to make conversation. But what could I talk about? I would read um, a newspaper, one newspaper in the morning, just on my phone. I'd get it up. I'd read a gossip magazine just to get some sort of lighthearted stuff. And then I would make sure that I knew I know this is very stereotypical, but I would know like what the web is doing, what. Um, like destinations of holidays that people are going on. But I would just make sure that I had this, this bank in my head that if there was a little bit of social awkwardness, a little bit of quiet, a little bit of silence in, in the appointment, then I could bring something up from a magazine. And a magazine, I'm not going to talk about the news or political things. I'd have said, oh, my God, in the, in the paper today, Cheryl Cole got a brand new haircut. Or talking um, sort of more relevant uh, sort of aspects of, of culture and that's what I would do. I would I would have this bank and my team back in the day, they must have just thought I was on repeat because that was my that was my thing. I'd make sure I had um, five questions or five answers that I could talk to clients about to keep the social aspects buzzing and mm. for them to really feel. Again, another big one, products in consultation throughout the whole appointment. You could be talking about products. What's your favorite shampoo? What do you use on your hair? Do you use conditioner? What do you comb your conditioner through, or do you just mm. rinse it off straight away? When you're using styling products, do you use an oil? Do you use a hairspray? There's so much we can talk about, and then drop in a little bit of um, reference to a, a bit of gossip magazine. Um, if you've been on holiday, I know they're all st very stereotypical, but that's how you really gain trust and a relationship with your clients. Because if you start telling clients you're going out for dinner tomorrow night to this restaurant, um, or you went to a restaurant, they start to get a bit uh, more of a feel about you and your personal life. And then they they know you. And then, oh, my hairdresser, they, with, they're with their friends. My hairdresser went to this restaurant the other night. And they said it was really nice. So that, that's another thing which I really recommend. Hope that, I hope that helped. But they're just little, little tricks that I really worked on at the beginning. Right. So we've softened off this here. And then we can we can just soften. So... Just putting your scissors in vertical and just releasing weight just through here. And then we can just soften off this bit here if we want to. But let's look at putting this front in. So somebody said, what if they didn't want it that long? And if they didn't want it that long, we've got a really nice reference point there just on her, on her chin. And that's just there because of the, the over direction. But we've got this hair sitting here what's the time five six minutes so i'm going to use that as my reference point and i'm just going to come in you've got a different yeah. angle there paul can you turn that around just slightly so that's it so there's my reference point i'm going to come straight through Well, I mean, that side looks like a little cheeky French bob, doesn't it now? Yeah. That hairline could go up a little bit more. So we could do our scissor over comb. So we get that in there. Just so you can see. Well, it's got a lovely shape on it. Just, just, by put, just changing that line really changes the shape, doesn't it? Yeah. If we get rid of that there. So let's just cut that in a little bit more. 
and then let's just get our scissor over comb and then just just refining this is all it is it's just refining just having a look and and this haircut might not have wanted to start off like this it might have wanted to start off a bit longer this is where you put your kind of um your signature on yeah. the record, right definitely yeah you just you just put your your spin on it you you just look at your client and you add your twice to it right yeah because what i would have been looking at is when say I, that reference point there and that was hanging i'd have probably brought that hair off her face and looked at how that sat and thought that looks better than that hanging down mm -hmm. here so let's just cut that in and then just put a nice a nice line in there mm. And then with the shorter sides, we could go shorter. So we could get our scissor over comb. You can see my scissors are going quicker than my comb. What's the top tip for scissor over comb, Paul? So your scissors should go double your comb speed. So because if my scissors went slower, we'd be putting lines in. And I'll show you. So if, my, if we went like that and just we'd be putting lines into the hair. But if we took it, our, our comb slower and our scissors nice and quick through there, just gives us a really nice definition through there. But that's the top tip. So slow comb, quick scissors. And that is it. But you can see that is all underneath short grad. Mm, nice. Uh, question here from Joy. She says, "I make hair faster and more concentrated when I work, but taking talking slows me down. How do I combine?" We were talking about this earlier. It's a bit like playing the guitar and singing at the same time. Yeah. How do you combine talking with working. Great question, Joy. Um, and it's something again. Experience comes in. Um, having a plan with your haircut, all your sectioning patterns in there, knowing exactly where you're going to go. But also stepping back a little bit from conversation helps a lot as well. When I was talking to Lee before we went live this morning um, and when we said, how long would this haircut normally take me in the salon? It took me nearly what? Well, it took me over an hour just to cut it wet. Whereas I'd have probably the client would be in Tesco by now if that was in, in the salon. But um, yeah, talking and uh, cutting hair is, is, a, is a very, very good skill to just to develop, to be honest. Mm. Um, and also ask. Um, What's the open questions? So asking open questions where clients can go on tangent and you can just let them do the talking. <laughs> let them do the talking, yeah. Just ask them um, what what's their favorite food sort of thing. And, and oh yeah, oh, great. Yeah, oh, yeah, I like pizza. And, and then and then they're just <laughs> going. Um, rather than saying um, like, I don't know, like closed questions. Do you like pizza? Yeah. It's like, oh, and then you've got to work again. Oh, okay. Uh, rather than saying, what what um What's what's the, what's your hair? How do you how do you like like your hair? How do you blow dry your hair? What do you use to blow dry your hair? Um, what's your favourite destination? All them questions that that can create really long answers and a reply from us is literally oh great like oh well, really and by using I find a higher pitch and and a bit of like a excitement to it they'll continue talking to be honest they they really uh, gauge your vibe and and if they think, oh, he's really into this conversation about her Tesco shop. Oh, really? What aisle was the best aisle? And then, oh, really? And then uh, they'll just they'll just continue to tell you because you, you're getting excited about the conversation without really having to do too much. Yeah. Well, another great session. Thanks, Paul. Thanks Thank for you. sharing with us all them looks, all that advice. It was brilliant. Thanks for the questions, guys. Um, and uh, we will see you again very soon with another Lee Stafford Education Online Live. So take care. Enjoy your day. Practice. See yeah. you soon. Take care. Take care.